Everybody's moving Everyone is going somewhere With everything they're trying Just to make it To a place where I am not there Still
thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, which we cannot take for granted. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us this morning as a family. We lay our lives before you, O oh God. Empty us, O oh God, of anything that is not of you. And fill us with your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your protection through the week. And Lord, we want to commit this new week into your hands. We want to commit all our plans to you, O oh God. We want to commit everything to you and surrender our lives and our families to you this morning, King of Glory. As we come before you, Lord, we come with different needs, Lord, and we pray that may you meet each one of us this morning, O oh God. May, may you minister healing to those who are sick, and may you touch those who have given up, O oh God, in life. May you touch our bodies this morning and make us whole, O oh God, as we come before you. As, as your children, Lord, there's no mina that passes us without sinning. We come before you this morning, and we ask that, Lord, may you forgive us, O oh God. Even as we lift our hands to you, we lift our voices to you, Lord, may you cleanse us, O oh God. Cleanse us, O oh God. Cleanse each one of us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the choirs. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. May you fill them, may you use them, O oh God, for your glory. And our preacher, Lord, we commit her into your hands. We pray that, Lord, may you use her mightily this morning, King of glory. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, O oh Lord, this morning to receive your word. Open our eyes to see you, O oh God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. You are all very welcome. Just turn to your neighbor. Welcome your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Welcome your neighbor in the presence of God. And we'd like to welcome our brothers and sisters who are following or worshiping with us online. Thank you so much for joining us. May God minister to you wherever you are. It's a whole communion service, so we'll continue with the order of service. The Lord be with you. You may be seated as we continue. Let us pray. This is the day of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We'll join in that prayer and pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by your spirit so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ have mercy upon us, Lord have mercy upon us. We shall join in the collect and pray together. Today is the 24th Sunday after Trinity, so may we pray together. Oh God, we beseech you, absorb your people from all our faces, that through your bountiful goodness, we may always be delivered from all bands of those sins which by our fatality have been come. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. For those who are outside, you're very welcome. May we all stand up as we join the team this morning, the worship team. May the Lord richly bless you as we continue in his presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us all welcome our neighbors. And in the same spirit, why can't we thank God for the life that he has given us, the oxygen that we breathe, the different miracles that he has done for us throughout the year. And even today, I know someone has already received a miracle. Let us give a, 
um, a hand clap to God for that.
us because we have all reasons to praise and shout for the Lord. Amen. 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 from you, Lord, that Lord, surely we'll seek you fast and everything else shall flow from you. We pray that, Lord, in you we'll have our being. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. 
and glorify your holy name because you are the majestic God and your glory reaches high to the heavens. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your presence, for one year spent in your presence is better than a thousand years spent in the world. We give you the glory for we can still take in the breath and for the opportunity to be in your presence, Lord, we thank you and give you all the glory. And Father, we are sinners and we accept the fact that we have sinned against you in many ways and in all circumstances, Lord, we have brought shame to your name in words, in actions, in what we have done and in what we failed to do, Lord, we have brought shame to your name. We have taken you back to the cross. But your word says in Second Chronicles 6, 30, that hear from your heavenly throne and forgive our sins, for you are not lost the human heart. Father, I pray that you shall indeed hear us from your heavenly throne and forgive our sins, for you alone, Jesus Christ, knows the human heart. And Father, we have washed our hands in innocence, and therefore we bring our supplications with thanksgiving to you, Lord. Father, we stand to pray for the church in the world, King of glory, Father, you instituted the church by your own self, but Father, many other things are happening in the church, the false doctrines that have come up, the false prophets, King of glory, but I pray that you shall come and intervene, for your word says that you shall come for a blameless, a church without reproach, Lord. I pray, Jesus Christ, especially for the church in Uganda, I pray for the clergy that are heading the church, I pray for the archbishop, the right reverend Stephen Kazimba, that Father, you shall use him to bring the church in Uganda to the principles that you'd want it to be. And we specifically pray for St. Francis as a church. Lord, we thank you for the leadership, for the chaplaincy. I pray that you shall use our chaplain, Lord, to make St. Francis chapel distinguished in spiritual matters. Lord, your word says in Isaiah 62 that I've set you as a watchman over, his, over Jerusalem. Give yourselves no rest and give me no rest until I establish Jerusalem as the price of the earth. I pray that in the same way as you have set him as a priest, as a watchman over St. Francis Chapel, I pray that he shall not give you rest and neither shall you give him rest until St. Francis is established as a price of the earth. I pray, Lord, for all the congregants, for all the ministers, Lord, that Father, we shall be people that are strongly grounded in your word, people that are strongly grounded in prayer, that there should be a difference with the St. Franciscans, Lord, in all intervals, King of glory. And Father, we stand to pray for the students, not this being a student chapel. Father, we thank you for the students that are here and even those that are not in this place. And Father, I pray that you shall guide them in their endeavors, not in their struggles of academics, King of glory. Give them wisdom, give them understanding, give them knowledge, King of glory. The word says in Proverbs 24, 3, that by understanding a house is built and by wisdom it is established. I pray, Father, that by understanding you shall establish the academics and by wisdom, Lord, you shall build them up in excellence, Lord, in prosperity, King of glory, that we shall see them so high a king of glory. I pray, Father, for provision for those that do not have tuition, the hostel fee, the upkeep, Lord, but your word says in Psalm 50 that you own cut on a thousand hills and all that is on earth and all that is in it belongs to you. And therefore we are confident that you are the divine provider. And I pray, Jesus Christ, that you shall indeed provide for them unfailingly and supply their needs according to your riches in glory. Father, I pray for our families and we thank you for each one of us belongs to our family. I pray, Jesus Christ, that you shall establish our families on God's grounds, Lord. Use us to be vessels of change in our families, that families that fear you are what shall be established in this nation, King of glory. I pray, Jesus Christ, that may your spirit come and take full control, Lord. May you come and train within us, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your word, O oh Lord, and we thank you for our today's preacher and for the topic that you have set forth today. I pray that you shall give him, you shall give her the words, King of God, speak to us. As you did in Jeremiah 1, Lord, you put the words speak in Jeremiah's mouth, King of glory. I pray that in the same way, Lord, you shall put the mouth, the words speak in her mouth, Lord, that she shall not speak by her own self, but you shall speak through her. 
And I pray that let your word fall on a fertile ground, Lord. And Father, your word affirms that even before we pray, you have heard us. And when we speak, you answer our prayers. Father, we are confident to know that whatever we have prayed for, you have granted to us, Lord. Many are our supplications, Lord. I pray that you shall grant them, Lord, according to your will, Jesus Christ. We thank you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Thank you very much. You may all be seated. Let's now have the minister of the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Our, our reading is taken from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 17, from verse 1 to 6. Exodus 17, from verse 1 to 6. It reads, All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people found fault with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you find fault with me? Why do you put the Lord to the proof? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with us? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, take in with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the road with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water shall come out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. That is the word of the Lord.
standing for the gospel. The gospel for today is the gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, beginning from verse 7. Glory be to Christ our Lord. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples has, had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. And I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did, as did also his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God for this dialogue. You can take your seats. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. You are all welcome to this, our second service. Please welcome your neighbor. Say, neighbor, welcome to the house of the Lord Almighty. And tell that neighbor that there is joy in the house of the Lord. And tell that neighbor, I pray that you experience that joy in its fullness. In its fullness. Praise the Lord. Our online viewers, I also want to welcome you. May you be blessed as you fellowship with us. In a special way, I want to welcome visitors. People who are, who are not St. Franciscans, but this Sunday they chose to come and worship with us. Please stand up if you are a visitor. Today we don't have a visitor, people. Yes, there are visitors there. Please clap for them very hard. Visitors, visitors, you are very, very welcome. And may the first impression of St. Francis Chapel be a lasting impression over your life. You can sit down. Okay. Is announced an announcement about FIC investment operation, please, Rev, not Reverend, Dr. Rebecca, please come and make this announcement. Thank you, Reverend Irene. Good morning, church. Praise God. Uh, Rebecca Nsovga is the name. St. Franciscan and a member of FIC. What is FIC? Franciscan Investment Cooperative, a cooperative society formed by St. Francis Chapel in 2010. So we have existed for 12 years and uh, starting with um, a few members and currently as of Friday, that's Friday 18th. We were 2,651 2, members. And those are members of this church. So if you are not a member yet, please 
uh, you are missing out. And uh, because our vision is a prosperous Franciscan, and the mission is to economically transform each Franciscan sustainably by providing appropriate financial and development related services. So if you are not a member yet, please uh, uh, see the FIC tent. And so FIC has been holding uh, investors breakfast for at least eight years, if I remember well. To enlighten us, the investors, on the various uh, investment options, and also to network with other cooperators. So this year's uh, uh, in breakfast is this Saturday, the 26th of November, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Imperial Royal Hotel. And the theme is the sustainable impactful investments. Our keynote speaker is Pastor Laban Jumba, who is a founder and CEO of Berangamweswa Foundation. The moderator is a chartered public accountant, Ronald Mukasa, a FIC member himself, a former treasurer of FIC, actually. So let's come and uh, learn. The fee is 50,000 for adults, uh, 30,000 for younger investors and students. Uh, it's, it's open. You don't have to be a member of FIC, but you can be a member of St. Francis Chapel. You are welcome to attend at the breakfast. Please register as the tent. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Dr. Rebecca. Today we have two Dr. Rebecca's in the house. Praise the Lord. Now I invite Canon Frank and Helen to come and give that announcement about your HD Connelly. Please, Helen, come quickly. We don't have much. Thank you very much, Acting Chaplain. God is good. And all the time. My wife and I uh, come from North Kigese Diocese. And today we are meeting uh, from our parish, Kagati Parish. We are meeting at St. Francis Community Center down here after the 11 o'clock service. 1.30, if you are from that parish, or you are a strong supporter, come and we fellowship together. We shall start with lunch. Thank you very much. Our uh, well wishers, welcome for lunch. Praise the Lord. Yes, confirmation begins on the 28th of November. That's next Monday. When it begins, it will be from 9 to 1. Please, those of you who have who have children, who have nieces and nephews, who have finished P7, register them. This week is the week of registration. Some actually have already registered. Let them not miss. Uh, is Namilembe Brescia's around? Namilembe Brescia's come and within one minute tell us what you want to tell us. Uh, good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend, for this opportunity. Um, Nami Rembe Blacious, a third year student, pursuing Bachelor of Science with Education. I'm the former Prime Minister, Makere Education Students Association, and aspiring Guild President, Makere University. And I'm also a Saint Franciscan. Praise the Lord. I'm a born Gain Christian by faith, and I'm so grateful to God for this wonderful opportunity to come and talk to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to tell you what you are going through. I'm also a passionate young leader who is looking at how best we young people can be of great value to this nation. So I request for your support, voting is 30th of this month, nine days from now. It will be a Wednesday. It will be online. Kindly vote for Namilembe Brocious, and surely I won't disappoint you as Franciscans. 
as a church, let us pray for our very own. Stretch out your hand and pray that if it is God's will, that she will become a good president. When I was here in the 80s, there was a lady who was a good president, and she really did a great work. And this one is even born again. Oh, oh. <laughs> Father Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. We want to thank you for this, your daughter, Namirembe Precious. Thank you, King of Glory, for that leadership desire that you have put in her. Heavenly Father, I pray that if it is your will that she becomes a good president, that it will be so. I frustrate every scheme of the enemy concerning this in the name of Jesus, and I pray, King of Glory, that you will have your way. Have your way. You are the almighty God. Lord, I pray that you who is a mighty warrior, that fight for her, Others give bribes when they are going to become good presidents. Lord, I pray that, Lord, this, your, your daughter, will represent you well. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Okay. Yes. There is registration going on concerning these mission groups, Teso, Time, and Wenzori Rhyme. Please, if you are a member from, who hails from there, do not... Hesitates to register. Uh, Bob, where are you, Bob? Bob has an announcement about mentality. I don't know what that one is. Praise the Lord. All the young men say, we're back. We're back. All right, mentality is, um, is a group for young men. Only young men. Ladies, please do not come. Don't show up because we're going to be talking about you. We don't want you to hear these things. These are our problems. We want to deal with them. And a mentality is a platform for young men. All young men, apart from married men. Married men, please don't come. Send your sons. We will happily talk to them. Girls, send your boyfriends, your fiancés. Mothers, send your sons as well. And this Thursday, I know we've not been, we've not had it for a long time, but this Thursday we're back. We shall be talking about Speech stewardship. Oh, yeah, please clap. You know, often we just talk, we're going to learn when to speak and when to be silent. Yes, and that comes from Psalm 141.3. And we have very, very good panelists. We shall have Oscar Cagonera and Colin that will come, who are going to be speaking to us about this. I may sneak in there if I have something important to say, otherwise I will just be like a picture. The best part of it, we have logistics. Hey. Now you see they are clapping. So, your supper that day is covered, please come from 5 o'clock to 7.30. And when the session ends, there will be men here that you can actually speak to one-on-one. -on -one. Our topic, whereas it's on speech, stewardship, we shall cover everything. Whatever you want to talk about, whatever questions you have, please send them to us and we shall address them. Again, I emphasize, this is strictly for young men. If you want to find out what we talked about, you find them and ask them, what did you say? But girls, keep away. And for that reason, it won't be online. You have to physically be here. God bless you and see you on Thursday. We have young men in the house. Put up your hand. Please do not miss this. I know those two speakers. They are wow speakers. So please do not miss. Yeah. Now, our speaker, our preacher, who has preached in the first service and in the second service, is no other than our very own sister, the Reverend Canon Dr. Rebecca Nyegenye. This lady is the provost of All Saints Cathedral. Provost. Do you know what a provost means? The head, the head of... <laughs> yes, the head of all the clergy. In the what? In the... What else? In a way, yeah. Because she is a pastor, a reverend at the cathedral, All Saints Cathedral. 
she is coming to talk to us on this topic never thirst again never thirst again may you be blessed as she speaks to us but before she comes i invite the drama group to come and minister to us No, no, me, I am sick and uh, he's not cooperative, he is not, he is selfish, he only thinks about himself. Uh -huh. I don't even understand why we employed him. You know, let me tell you the uh -huh. fact, uh -huh. he is stealing from you. Uh, he is stealing from you and this is a fact, I saw it yesterday. This I is, took, it is against the company values. How, how does he steal? Uh -huh. No, uh -huh. I say let us set aside this amount for this activity. This one will go for charity. This one, we, we shall help modify the building. But did he listen? No, no, no wonder the auditors came and they were complaining about money, 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 money has been, you know? Jose, hey. Jose is the problem. Jose. Why do we employ people who are not uh, ethically upright? I hey. have been keeping this to myself. I said, ah, should I? My Why God. should I be an oh enemy of progress? God. Oh my God. I said, I said no. But yesterday it was too much. I said, ah, out of the goodness of my heart, let me report the man. And I did. I got you as a gift from God. Thank you. Where do I find employees like you? Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. You have come at the right time. Yes, please. Uh, now. I just finished uh, closing the books and here is the money. Tell me about I don't have words for you, by the way. I don't have words for you. But boss. Actually, give me these books. I want you to go in my office. I'm chasing you right away. No, boss. How do you start stealing from the company? Eh? It is against the company value. But boss. Go in my office. You're terminated with me. Go. But boss. I'm finding you in my office. Emma, please. Emma. No, 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 no. You have not come. Emma, we are Start by quenching the thirst of our souls by trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay.
Father God, we thank you that you have already spoken to us through our brothers as they have shared ably in that skit. I pray, my Father and my God, that you speak to me and speak through me and bring your word with clarity, authority, and power to my sisters and brothers who are seated here. Lord, I thank you that you have chosen to use me as a vessel. Honor your name through me, Lord, and may, let me be that fountain that you have chosen, Lord, that the living water will flow through me to be able to quench the thirst of your children. I ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord so much once again for the opportunity to be with you this morning. I thank my brother, Reverend Onesmus, and my sisters, Irene and Scovia, and the rest of the team here for giving me this opportunity to share with you the gospel today. And I pray that the Lord will bless our time together. And we are addressing the theme, never thirst again. Never thirst again. Why? Because when you keep thirsty, you take things that are minor and you forget what is major. And just as we saw in the skit, which is a very wonderful introduction to our message, that the flesh demands. And when the flesh demands, we forget the everlasting things and we concentrate on the temporary things. And I want to pray this morning that the Lord will help us to evaluate the temporary things as opposed to the everlasting things. I bring you greetings from All Saints Cathedral and from my own family. They know that I am here and they are praying for us. Dear brothers and sisters, as you read the scriptures, as we read in the first um, reading in Exodus chapter 17, we looked at the children of Israel, very thirsty. And they give us the characteristics of what the flesh looks like, especially when God is talking about, the, the, about people who are thirsty. In Exodus, the Bible is very clear about the children of Israel. They had just moved from the promised land. I mean, they have moved from Egypt. They have crossed the Red Sea. They have seen the goodness of God. And they are now walking into the promised land. And when you read chapter 15, 14, 15, you realize that after crossing the Red Sea, they are singing. Miriam is leading them in a song of praise. They are worshiping the Lord. They are so um, content that the Lord has delivered them. They have seen the chariots and the horses of the Egyptians disappearing in the water. And they have seen themselves transition to the wilderness, going into the promised land. Shortly after that, the children of Israel become hungry and they forget that God is a provider. And when they forget that God is a provider, they immediately begin complaining and they complain about food. They complain until God provides food for them. It didn't take long. The children of Israel are thirsty. And when the children of Israel get thirsty, they again forget that God who provided food, the Lord who took them through the Red Sea, the Lord who is walking with them is the same God who can provide the water for them to drink. But instead of looking to God who is a provider, the Lord who has it all, the children of Israel turn again to grumbling and quarreling as we see in chapter 17. The Bible says that there are four the people quarreled with Moses, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? The children of Israel are quarreling. Friends, the thirst that we are talking about is the thirst of the flesh. That the flesh will demand for what is temporary, for what is physical, to make sure that they have that temporary satisfaction. And this is what we see with the children of Israel. They forget the long-term relationship that they have with God. And they turn to begin complaining about something which they know for sure that God is able to solve. 
So when we are thirsty, when our flesh is yearning for something, we forget what God can do. We forget what God has done. We begin to complain. We begin to grumble. We begin to murmur. We fail to understand that even God is listening. We complain. We kill. And this is what Moses is saying. That these people are out to stone me. They want to kill Moses, a leader who has been leading them. Someone that has gotten them from the horror of the Egyptians. Friends, when the flesh demands we forget God. We forget what God has done. We forget the blessings. We forget the benefits that God has brought into our lives. We forget that God is our creator. We forget that God is able. And we turn around and we want to take something simply because that is closest to me. And I need it. I need it there and then. So these are some of the characteristics that when the flesh is demanding, these are some of the things that come out of our lips. There is that sense of, uh, uh, of not appreciating, there is that sense of complaining, there is that sense of grumbling, there is that sense of looking around for what can be, can, can fix my problem and I want to fix it here and now. And that is the, the demand of the flesh. You can think about Esau and Jacob. What happened when Esau felt like, I need lunch and I need it now? And what happened? He ate the lunch. But he lost the lasting relationship of being the firstborn and having the treasure of the firstborn. He lost his birthright because he needed lunch there and then. I want us to ask ourselves about the things that we want here and now. And I must get it. And if I don't get it, I'm like going to die. You just feel the flesh reminds you that if you don't get it now, you are going to die. Yeah. That is why girlfriends and boyfriends deceive each other. If you don't come now, you are actually going to find me dead. Give them a chance to die. <laughs> yes. People who die, die. But give him two days. You'll find him alive with another girlfriend. They will not die. And that is what we use. We say, you know, the flesh demands. And the whole thing is that if you don't do it, you die. Sometimes when we ask our parents for something, you threaten them. If you don't give it to me, I am going to kill myself. Try it. Yes, can someone tie the rope for you? You know, there are so many things that we feel, I need it and I need it now. But what God is telling us here, he's telling us about um, never to thirst again. But can it be possible? Can we be able to say, I am not going to thirst again? Yes, you are going to thirst again. But your thirsty is going to be under control. Look at the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. The Samaritan woman is in this crisis. She's a woman who is all over the place. The Bible tells us according to the answer that she gave to Jesus that she has had several husbands and even the one she has is not hers. That is her life. She's been moving from one husband to another. It can happen to some of us. In the first year, there is one for first year, there's one for second year, there's one for third year, and there's one for fourth year. And you know when you go through that, sometimes it takes to come and also you, re you repeat years. And so when you repeat, even the retake has another one. You know, we need to, uh, you, you know, when we are talking about the Samaritan woman, we are not talking about a story that is well distanced from us. We are talking about realities of life that are happening in the midst of us. But here, Jesus, what he's telling us today is that I want to quench your thirst. 
I want to give you that kind of satisfaction that is going to lead you, not just in these earthly things, but the satisfaction that you are going to enjoy even in everlasting life. When you look at this Samaritan woman, she's a woman who is struggling until she encounters Jesus at the well. And when she encounters Jesus at the well, Jesus is telling her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. There is a gap. She thought she was filling up the gap, but the gap is still there, which means He's like te telling Jesus, even you, you can actually be <laughs> my husband. There is a gap. You know, when you do not have a gap that is filled, you are still open. And every day, there is still space for one more. One more. Just a little more. And this is what this woman is saying. But Jesus had already told her, Jesus told this woman, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never thirst again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is saying, woman, whatever you are telling me, yes, but I want to assure you that there is something in you that is lacking that is making you to do everything that you are doing. Friends, there is always a source of lack of satisfaction. When you do things and you feel you are not satisfied, there is always a source for lack of satisfaction. And that is why you can see someone ever quarreling, ever grumbling, never satisfied. Even if you give them whatever that you have to give them, they will never be content because of what you have given them. There will always be space for one more. That is the reason why you have a house, you have 7 million, and you, you, you still 80,000. There is always space for one more until Jesus fills up that space. And that is the challenge, friends, that we have. Because in our lives, you'll always have a hunger that even when someone has trusted you, you're going to betray that trust. How many of us have betrayed that trust? That someone has trusted you so much but at the end of the day, you betray the trust because in your heart, there is always space for one more. It is this one more that we want to destroy today in the name of Jesus. That the Lord Jesus will come into our hearts and fill up that space. The Lord filled up the space of the Samaritan woman. And when the Samaritan woman's space was filled up, the Samaritan woman forgot that there was a bucket that she had come to fetch water. That is the gap that someone has in life to think this bucket must be filled with water. And that is why she was asking Jesus, you even do not have a bucket to fetch water. Where are you going to get the water to give me? But when she encountered the water, she forgot the bucket. How I pray today you will forget your bucket because the Lord will have given you that living water. And she went out because Jesus had already told her that the water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And when Jesus Christ filled this woman with water, the woman lost her thirst. She was never thirsty again. This woman ran into the city and called the people and told them to come and see the man that has given her satisfaction. Hallelujah. Friends, Jesus gives satisfaction. And Jesus is on the throne. It does not matter. This woman was disgruntled. This woman was living a shameful life. This woman was rejected. I believe this is a woman that nobody wanted to greet in the village. Yes, just to think about your boyfriend that you've related from first year. And in third year, there is this other girl who comes up shining and you see them going together. This is, this, this is, the, could have been the nature of this woman. 
that someone is there with your husband and all of a sudden see this Samaritan woman is out with your husband. And so you can't have any kind words for such a woman. But this is a woman that encounters Jesus. And all the husbands are forgotten because none of them was actually her husband. I want to pray that God will teach us this morning to let go the things that control our lives so that we can only be controlled by God who is the Alpha and the Omega, God the beginning and God the end. And this is the, these are the words that I'll be concluding with in chapter 21 of Revelation. And he Chapter 21 of Revelation 5, verse 5. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I'm making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I'll give water from the spring of the water of life without payment. Hallelujah. This is what the one who is now seated on the throne. This is Jesus seated on the throne. And he's saying, behold, I'm making things new. The Lord is looking at you and he's saying, my daughter, my son, where have you been all these years? I have seen you moving around. I have seen you rotating around. I have seen you roaming around. I have seen you desperate. I have seen you feeling rejected. I have seen you feeling doomed. Several times you've contemplated the death. You know you have messed up your life. And Jesus is saying, behold, I am doing something new. Hallelujah. I pray that your hearts will be opened to perceive what God is doing in your life. And he says, write down these words and they are trustworthy. And he said, it is done. Why? Because I'm the Alpha and the Omega. God the beginning and God the end. I was sharing with the first congregation that friends look. Some of us in this generation, we were either born in Mulago Hospital, the women's wing. We were born in London. We were born in Dubai. We were born in Canada. Our parents fly out to go and give birth, and they give birth to such a wonderful baby. When you ask people of my generation, they will give you different answers. I was born along the road when my mother was going to the hospital. I was born in a banana plantation. I was born behind the house. Those are the answers of my generation. But look at the, the, the reality of what God is doing. That you who was born in London and I who was born in the banana plantation, we have all met at Makerere University. God the beginning and God the end. And friends, that person is not walking in banana leaves. You don't identify them here. No. Because God is the Alpha and the Omega. He began their life in the banana plantation and he knew where he was taking them. He began their life on the veranda and he knows where he's taking them. When you see a minister driving their huge car, ask them where they were born. Yes, some of them will tell you the real story. Others will pretend as if they were born on streets of Kampala. But in all this, a child who is born in a banana plantation is going to grow up naked in the compound. And when they are born in a banana plantation, they are actually come free of infections. The one who is in hospital is going to be born with an infection and is going to be taken in a nursery. <laughs> you know? They are those born there and they grow up with special immunity. God the beginning and God the end. Each one of us, the Lord has streamlined life for us. And each one of us has a destiny that is very clear in the eyes of God. And God knows where we are going. 
Some of us don't want to talk about our origins. Some of us don't want to talk. And you, you claim to be a city girl or a city boy when you are actually a village girl and a village boy. May God give you the grace to understand where you're coming from and know that where I'm coming from, God is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows my beginning and he's taking me to my end. Hallelujah. And that is why he's saying, I want you to look at me. I want to give you living water. Why am I giving you living water? Because I'm making all things new for you. In the old story, I want to bring it to an end. I want to begin a new lifestyle in you. You've been having that life of longing. You've been struggling around. You've been walking all over the place. Everybody thinks you're a nuisance. Everybody thinks you are useless. Everybody looks at your dress and is like, now where did you buy this one? Everybody looks at your head and like, how was this head manufactured? It's actually God who manufactured it. Everyone looks at your eyes and they're like, look at her big eyes. They are God's eyes because you are made in the image of God. You know, all these things, you look at them and you wonder, what is it? But God is saying, I am making something new. Why? I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am God the beginning and the end. God wants you to tap into your destiny. To know that he holds your destiny in his hands. He understands where you're coming from. And he understands where you're going. And he's reminding you, don't you cut your destiny short by taking what does not matter. You know, friends... Some of us, even at our internship, we still. Now, if you fail at your internship, will you ever get a job? Ask yourself these questions. The little things someone has entrusted you with, you begin to steal them. I want to pray that God will give us the grace. There is an actor, I think some of you are just going to, you could have, you could have seen it at a Sam. He's an actor who is very foolish, <laughs> you know. Even what they have prepared for him, he steals it before it is served. You steal the food and someone comes and says, but where is, where is the food I put here? And you're saying, which food? Say, said, yeah, I had prepared for you food. It was here. And you're hiding it in your pocket. No, you steal what is yours. And that is the demand of the flesh. There is something lacking in you that the Lord wants to fill up. So that that yearning, that longing. One day we arrested a young girl who had stolen a phone. And... He stole a small phone of about 50,000. But she had a phone of over 1 million. That was her phone. So she was arrested and we all looked out. We thought this girl had really stolen a big phone. And she removed the SIM card and kept it. And now because they were looking, she went to the toilet and kept the phone. And the cleaners came to clean and got the phone in the dustbin and they took it. So by the time this girl is arrested, this girl has a SIM card. And we ask her about the phone she stole. And she says the phone is like that one. This is a phone of 50,000. You are carrying a phone of 1 million. And you are still stealing the phone. And now the phone you stole is lost. They are demanding you for the phone and you have the SIM card. Friends, emptiness. When we called the father, the father said, couldn't I have bought even a better phone if you wanted it? But that is the desire of the flesh. The desire of the flesh is the demand. It puts demands on you that you cannot control in your own power. Neither can you control in your own ability. You need Jesus to control the desires of the flesh. That is when you can have the satisfaction. That is when you can know that is the Christ that is going to control my mind and my emotions. 
And so he says that I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. And he says to the thirsty, I will give you from the spring of water of life without payment. To the thirsty. Each one of us could be thirsty in one way or the other. There is a vacuum in your heart that seems not to be getting full. And you are thinking, what am I going to do? I have walked this journey and there is a vacuum in me that is not getting filled up. What am I going to do? My destiny is getting broken. It is possible that you are here. You know, even in your secondary school, even in your primary school, there are children who carry expulsion letters instead of reports. And you could have been that kind of person. And even right now, I could be speaking and you are at the verge. You've survived the expulsion several times. And you are at the verge of being expelled. And you are thinking, God, and you don't know what to do. And this is what Jesus is saying to you. He's saying to the thirsty, I will give water from the spring of water of life without payment. Friends, at the age of 12, I was a little younger thirsty girl, born in a family of a clergy. Everyone knew I was a very good girl. Everybody knew I was, everything looked so good. But inside me, I was thirsty. I was wanting. Until this one day, as I watched the Jesus film, and I looked at the Jesus film, and after looking at the Jesus film, I realized this one thing, that this Jesus who died, died for the younger people, he died for the old people, he died for the middle-aged people, he died for everybody, and if you make a choice to know him, he's going to bring you total satisfaction. It was on that day, as a young girl in primary school, I stepped forward, and surrendered my life to Jesus. Friends, the Lord filled up the gap of my life. The Lord has been my savior. He has been my Lord. He has been everything to me. Yes, I thirst, but there is that living water that fills up my space again and again. And I know I have someone to draw from. I have a well that never dries up, and that is Jesus Christ. And every time I call on his name, he calls on to me. And that is the reason why, friends, I am presenting to you this Jesus, not because I do not know him, not because I've heard about him, but because I have tested Jesus. I have known Jesus. I have walked with Jesus. This Jesus has given me education. This Jesus has given me a family. This Jesus has given me a job. This Jesus has given me a ministry. And what will I do except to present Jesus to you? Praise the Lord. This morning, dear sisters and brothers, this Jesus who has been my Lord for over 36 years is the same Jesus who can change and transform your life. Is the same Jesus who can fill up the longing of your heart. Is the same Jesus who can deal with that rejection. It is the same Jesus who can deal with that kind of theft. What we saw in the skit here is a theft. This young man was a thief, a real thief. He was not just taking money. When you see, you are like, but he was just taking money because it was there. That is theft. And many of us are growing up with that cup of being thieves. And when we grow up, we become real, real talented thieves and educated thief. We want God to withdraw us from that category. That let education be transformative, not just informative. And it can be informative when you take education without Christ. Education without Christ is informative. But education with Christ is transformative. And this is what we need. This is what we need in our education systems. You can be in a, 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 I mean a system like this, but if even if it is a professor, it is possible that they received academic, which is informative, but not transformative. Education without Christ is information. 
education with Christ is transformation. And it is you, the younger people, that are going to change the destiny of Uganda. But that will only take you by incorporating your education with our Lord Jesus Christ. That you can fill up the gaps of your life, the longing of your hearts can be filled by only Jesus Christ. So that as you sit in class, you are beginning to think not how you are going to eat, but how you are going to make others benefit out of your education. I'm a mother of three. And one of the things that helped us to go through, what course do you want to do, is asking, why do you want this course? And the interesting story was one of my daughters who said, I want to be a teacher. And I said, mm -hmm, thank you. Why do you want to be a teacher? And she said, one, I want to pay back. There's a teacher who beat me. My question was, that gentleman who beat you is not in your class that you're going to teach. Neither are his children part of the class that you are going to teach. Why do you punish the children who are not part of the story? And because of that, we ruled out that she's not a teacher. And we started praying for something else that she would do as a service to the Lord. She's not a teacher today, but where she is, she understands that is a service to the Lord. Amen? What do you want to do? What is your destiny? And what are your intentions? What are your motives? I want to pray this morning that the Lord Jesus will give you that satisfaction so that whatever you do, you do it the service of the Lord. And not for yourself. Friends, God has not called you for yourself. God has called you that you can do his will and accomplish his purposes among his people. And I want to assure you, if you take in Jesus, he's saying yes, when you receive me, I give water. I, I'll give you from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son or my daughter. That the one who conquers, that is the one who understands that Jesus is Lord. There is no other conquest, friends. All these things that we get, you know, we celebrate them but they fill up the gap and leave you empty again and wanting and wanting. And that is why after you finish your first degree, the application forms are waiting for you for your masters. When you finish your masters, the application forms are waiting for you for your PhD. When you finish your PhD, they begin to tell you the doctoral fellowships. And then you do them and you never get satisfied. Before you know it, you are back and doing another master's. And then someone tells you, you need a short course and you do all this until you die because there is no satisfaction. Amen? And do them please. But remember that Jesus satisfies. Wherever you are, your satisfaction is from Jesus. I want to pray that you'll choose Jesus this morning. That Jesus will enter your life and bring complete satisfaction in your soul. And that you'll never be the same again. You are not going to lack. You are not going to linger around. The Bible says that if you have what to put on and you, have, you find contentment in the Lord, if you have what to eat and what to put on, you find contentment in the Lord. Many of us have no contentment because whatever we are doing, we are not doing it with the Lord. I want to call upon us that we will choose to find contentment in the Lord. And I want to encourage those of us that are here, it is possible that you've been moving and you don't find any satisfaction. Your life is still saying at least one more, at least another time. I need to do it again. I need to do it again. I want to pray that that longing will be filled by the Lord Jesus Christ today. I want to ask us to stand, please. 
And I want to invite you. When I gave my life to Jesus, it was in the midst of many people. I was seeing only all the people in the fellowship of the revival. And I didn't know what I was going to do with them as a young girl. But friends, God gave me the victory to know that, yes, I can fellowship with them. Not that they are old, but they are children of God. And so you can make up your mind today to make a choice among many. And move out of that crowd and come here to the front and surrender to Jesus. And that is what exactly what I want to request you to do. Maybe you have known Jesus. But there is still that emptiness in you that you need the Lord to fill. Maybe you want to come to Jesus for the first time. Maybe you feel a sense of lack of satisfaction. Jesus satisfies. As we sing that song, I want to invite you to come to the front as a sign of surrender. And we are going to pray together with you. Just make your way. The Lord has spoken to you and you feel I need to surrender to the Lord. You need to say enough is enough. I need to give up even this which is troubling me. And God will give you the spirit of self-control. And you'll never be the same again. Please take a bold step and you'll never be the same. Thank you. Thank you. As you come, continue to surrender to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. Surrender your heart to the Lord. Because you know where you're coming from. Just come in complete surrender. The Lord is able to receive you. The Lord loves you as a child. Just come in complete surrender. You are saying, Lord, I surrender to you. I am tired of carrying myself. I am tired of walking by myself. I want to surrender to you. Just make a bold step and come to the front. Make a bold step of total surrender to the Lord. You are saying, yes, Lord, I surrender. I am empty. I want to be filled. I need you in my life. I have searched and searched, but I'm still empty. As I sing this song, just make your way and surrender to the Lord. Fearing your future, 
You do not know what your destiny is. You are so scared. Surrender that to the Lord. The Lord holds your future. He holds your destiny. He has your purposes in his hands. Surrender to him completely and say, Lord, I surrender. I am withholding nothing from you. Everything that I am belongs to you. I surrender it to you. Just surrender it to the Lord. Declare it to the Lord, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's more than able. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's God the beginning and God the end. He never lets you down. He never frustrates you. He has promised that he's going to be your father. And you're going to be a daughter and a son. He is able to involve you in his affairs. He is the Lord. He wants to control your future. He wants to control your destiny. He wants to control your lifestyle. He wants to control your salvation. He wants to control you in everything. Surrender to him. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, our God. And just say these words after me. Lord Jesus. I thank you for my life. Today I come before you because you have called me. I surrender my entire life before you. I withhold nothing from you. I open my heart to me, to you. Search my heart and remove every stubborn element in my heart. Remove all the wickedness. Take away bad company from me. I want to walk with you. I choose to love you. I choose to follow you. I repent of all my sins. And today I recommit myself to you. Or today I make a commitment to know you as Lord and Savior. And I declare with my lips that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, for giving me the opportunity to draw to you. I surrender completely to you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you so much for this confession that has come from your children. I ask that, Lord, you bless them. I know, my Father and my God, that there are those who have not made their way to come here. But they are hurting, they are aching, Lord. They have no destiny, they have no direction. Father, reach out to them and remind them that you are the source of living water. And they can take the water without payment because you have paid the whole bill. You paid it on the cross, Jesus. I thank you, my Father and my God. I honor you. We bless you for in Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. children. Thank you, Lord God, for each one of them. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking them up, for causing them to surrender their lives to you. I pray that you deal ever, with every stronghold in their lives, O oh Lord. Disconnect them from any altar of Satan that is claiming them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray that they will walk closely with you and none of them will miss heaven. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You can go back to your seats. Please fill that form. And after the service, go to the other tent where you will meet some people and they will strengthen you further. Yeah, it's time to give to the Lord. Please, church, as you give to God, remember God loves a cheerful giver. Bless you. The choir is going to lead us in song as we give to God.
give you thanks and praise, O oh Lord, for these gifts that your children, your people have given to you. Sanctify this money with the precious blood of the Lamb. And I pray, Heavenly King, that your people, your children, will never lack anything to give to you. And we pray that this money will be used in the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I want to request us to sit uh, or kneel, whichever is comfortable, and submit to the Lord as we prepare to come to the table. And together we'll join in that prayer of humble access. We do not come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, but in your great mercy. We are not good enough even to eat the crumbs that fall from your table, but you never change. It is the nature of your being, always to be merciful. We therefore humbly ask you, gracious Lord, to let us eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, so that our sinful lives may be purified by his precious blood, and that we may dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We praise and thank you, our Redeemer, the Father, for your glory and your love. We praise you for forgiving for your son for us and for his suffering and death, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he had given it thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we do this in remembrance of him. With this bread and this cup, we celebrate the perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim the resurrection from the dead and his ascension, and we look for the fullness of his coming in glory. Accept, therefore, this our sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise as we eat and drink these holy gifts that are here on the table in the presence of your divine majesty. Renew us by your spirit and inspire us by your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Christ who loves us, and who gave himself for us, we give you thanks, O Lord. Amen. His death we proclaim. His resurrection we confess. His coming we await. We treat him. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant. And so, brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve you.
about the Lord is great 
And in that mood of worship, let us dedicate ourselves afresh to God that we may love and serve him and serve our fellow men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies, all that we are and all that we hope to be in your mercy. Renew us by your Holy Spirit that we may live together in love and do all the good things you have created us to do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now may the peace of God, which is greater than we can understand, be in your hearts and remain with you so that you may always know and love God and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us. May this blessing keep us now and forevermore. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Praise the Lord, church. Yes, lastly, I want to say that you buy these books. They are the tent outside. Daily power for the young ones, primary and all level. Daily guide, senior five, six, and those of us who work. Please, these books are going to help you to read your Bible on a daily basis. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I hope someone has been blessed today because they have killed me. So as we resist to go back to our different homes, our different places of work, we pray that the Lord may be your satisfaction in whatever thing you do. Amen. And let his living water flow through your life. Amen. Oh, no.